In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important theorems um, in calculus. Uh, as you can see uh, in its name, it's called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. And we've actually been already talking about the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus and actually using it over and over again. But now I'm going to kind of give the actual Fundamental Theorem of Calculus and actually call it. It says, if capital F prime of T is continuous on a closed interval from A to B, then the definite integral from A to B of the deriv uh, of that derivative F prime of T dt is actually going to equal. Now, we've talked about this before. Remember when we said that if we um, do the integral of a rate of change, then it's going to actually give you the total change in a quantity from T equals A to T equals B, right? We already said that if this right here was a rate of change, then this integral will give you the total change in F from T equals A to T equals B. And so if we knew the function F, whose total change that this integral calculates, then all we have to do, remember, a change in a quantity is just the difference or a subtraction between certain values, right? And so this integral actually just equals F of B minus F, all right, that's the capital F, F of A, right? We take the right end point and subtract the left end point from it, right? And that is what this integral will always equal. That is the fundamental theorem of calculus. That is that total chain stuff, right? And so in other words, the definite integral of the derivative of a function is the total change of the function, right? We've been talking about that before. We're gonna apply this to our cost and revenue and profit to help us answer some additional questions. For instance, question one, suppose that the marginal revenue of producing widgets is given by C prime of Q, right? What is What does the integral, the definite integral from A to B of C prime of Q dQ represent? Well, it represents, right? So notice here, this is the integral from A to B of C prime of Q dQ, right? Well, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, I know that this is the integral from A to B, C prime of Q dQ. This is going to equal C of B, which is this end, uh, right end point, minus the cost at A. Now notice this is C prime in our integral, but here I wrote C regular the regular cost function right and so basically as we said before it represents the total cost um, and i'm going to be a little bit more particular here it's the total change i'm going to use this marker the total change in cost when production changes from zero widgets, sorry, not zero, but A widgets to B widgets, okay? So notice this is the cost of producing eight widgets, right? However many that is. And this is the cost of producing B widgets, right? And so when I subtract the two, I'm gonna get the total difference or the total change in the cost from A units or A widgets to B widgets, right? Another way that we can say this is that this is the additional cost. All right, so it's the total change in cost. Usually cost goes up at least a little bit when you increase production. And since A is all, uh, B is always greater than A, it's the additional cost of increasing production from A units or widgets, we're producing widgets here, to B widgets. And so that's a, that those, both of those are valid ways to um, interpret what this integral represents. Question two, what does the integral from zero to B of C prime of Q dQ represent, right? Again, it's the total, it's the total change in cost when production increases. 
I said changes here. I'm saying increases here. Same thing. From zero units, and we actually have widgets here, so I'm going to say widgets. Widgets are little gadgets that are being produced to be widgets. All right. We can also, and this is coming from the fact that we have the integral from zero to B of C prime of Q dQ, which is C of B minus C of zero, right? Now, remember, the C of B is the cost of producing B widgets. And C of zero is our fixed cost. And so what we really have here in this integral when it starts at zero is we have the additional cost of producing B items. And that's beyond fixed cost. Okay? Because I, what I'm doing is I'm taking the total cost. CC of B is actually the total cost of producing B widgets, right? But I'm subtracting from that the cost of producing zero widgets. Well, the cost of producing zero items or widgets is your fixed cost. And so when I subtract the fixed cost from the, call, the total cost of uh, producing B items or B widgets, that's the additional cost of producing B items. We used to call this variable call variable cost in our previously in this course, right? So this integral basically gives the variable cost, and you probably can't see that, um, this integral gives the variable cost of producing B widgets, okay? And so now that we have this information, this gives us another way to write total cost. We've always known that total cost is the same thing as fixed cost plus variable cost, where our fixed cost is the cost of producing zero items. And now our variable cost is basically this integral that we just wrote in part B, the integral from zero to B of C prime of Q dQ. And so total cost is now given by this expression here that involves this integral. Now, we would need to know the fixed cost and we would need to know the derivative of our cost function in order to use this formula to give the total cost. So let's see how we can use this in action in order to help us find the uh, derivative of uh, the total cost. And so example two here, it says a marginal cost function C prime of Q is given in the graph below. If the fixed costs are $10,000, estimate the following. Part A, we want to find the total cost of producing 30 items, right? And so we just finished saying that total cost equals fixed cost plus variable cost. Well, our fixed cost is $10,000. And by that formula before, our variable cost is going to be the integral from 0 to 30 of C prime of Q dq, right? Now, what we can do here is we could estimate this integral here because we're given the graph of our function. We don't actually have the actual rep algebraic representation. I'm going to need some more space here, and so I'm going to cut this down a bit. And so what I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to want to estimate C, this integral from 0 to 30 of C prime of q dq. I'm actually going to come off to the side over here. I want to estimate the integral from 0 to 30, C prime of Q dQ, right? And I can estimate that using my left-hand sum. I'm not going to do my interval notation here. Now that I know interval notation, I'm just going to write out what uh, values I need to do the sum. And so it's going to be uh, my delta X or my delta Q, which is, well, let's just write out. I, I'm starting at zero and I'm going to 30. If I use the number of tick marks here, I have one, one, two, three sub intervals. That means my n is going to equal three. And so when I do my left hand sum, I'm going to have i equals zero to two of c prime of q sub i.
Well, it, it, that is, that's actually right. <laughs> Times delta Q. All right. Now, this is going to equal my delta X is what I'm counting by. If you did 30 minus 0 over 3, you're going to see that you get 10. So my delta Q is going to be 10. And I find my Y values by looking at the Y values here. And I'm going to estimate them. Now, this is going to be a little off, but I'm going to have the Y values um, at, from, at 0, 10, 20, and 30. When I use my left-hand sum, I use the leftmost endpoint. I know that it's not all the way at 40, but I'm going to approximate that to be a 40 at C of 0. C sub 10, I know that that's not 20. It's a little bit above 20, so I, but I'm going to use 20. I'm using an estimate here. And at C of 20, C prime of 20, it's a little bit above 10. I am going to actually use that value. I'm going to say it's 12, right? And so I put those values in my calculator. So I'm going to have 10 times the quantity 40 plus 20 plus 12, and I get 720 approximately. And I can also estimate this using my right-hand sum. And my right-hand sum, if I use sigma notation, it's going to be i equals 1 to n, which is 3. C prime of Q sub I times delta Q. Again, my delta Q is 10, and now I'm going to use my right-hand sum, so I don't start at 0 and use that Y value. I use the Y value at 10, and so I say that that was 20 before. The Y value at 20, I use 12, and now I've got to use the Y value at 30. I'm going to use uh, 13, all right? And so and these are these Y values to these points at those input values. And so I'm going to put this in my calculator. So it's going to be 10 times 20, uh-oh, plus 12, plus 13, press enter, and I get 450. And I know I can get a better estimate by doing that 720 plus 450, and then dividing that by 2. And so what I'm going to have here is 11, 585. So this one was 450, and if I did the 720 plus 450 over 2, I got 485. If I if I said that correctly, let's go ahead and look back. 585. All right, I wish I could see that on my screen. And so notice here, the units of this is going to be, so now I know that I have my fixed cost, which is $10,000. And the integral of C prime of Q, remember C prime of Q is written in terms of dollars per item. And then I multiply it by Q, which is the number of items. So the items cancel. And so that would be $585. And so the, total cost would be $10,585, all right? So the part B, it says find the additional cost if the company increased production from 30 units to 40 units, right? So the additional cost, notice here, I'm not talking about the total cost anymore. I'm talking about the additional cost. And the additional cost of increasing production is going to do come from that integral from A to B, right? For instance, in this example above here, I said that this is the additional cost of increasing production, right? And so my, I'm going to start at 30, and I'm going to end at 40 of C prime of Q dQ, all right? Now, I'm going to do something different, right? The integral from 30 to 40 of C prime of Q dQ, if I'm given the graph of C prime of Q, which is positive from 30 to 40, is this part of my graph here, is going to be this area under my curve, right? It's basically the area of that. Now, I have a grid sitting in the background, right? And so instead of using my left and right hand sum and coming up with the estimate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate this area by using my knowledge of the number of squares that are under the, in this region here. Notice here, this is composed of one grid and then half of another. So it's one and a half of those squares that make up that grid, right? So if I want that area, all I have to do is figure out what the area of one of these grid square is and multiply it by 1.5, right? 
So if I look, my grid is counting by tens vertically and by tens horizontally. So each of those squares is 100 square feet. Well, square units, I'm sorry. I don't know where I got feet from. It's 100 square units, right? So if I multiply that 100 square units by this one whole square here, and this is about one and a, uh, sorry, a half a square here, one plus one, one plus a half is one and a half. I multiply that by 100, and I get 150, right? This is going to be in dollars, and so there we have it. Now, you can go through the process of using your left and right-hand sums. You actually could have used this to get the integral from 0 to 30, but you will have to count all of these partial squares, and that can get a little um, bit more subjective. But since this really looks like 1 and a half, um, I decided to use this method, right? It's still the area under the curve. Remember, these integrals, especially when you have a positive function, is the area under the curve and the um, between that curve and that horizontal axis. And so there we go. Part C, find the value of C prime of 25. C prime of 25, all right, C prime of 25, that means go to 25, plug it into your derivative function and tell me what the output is, right? When we're given a graph like we have here, that's equivalent to finding the y coordinate to the point that has an input value of 25, which is here, which would be 10, right? This point will be the point 25, 10 looks like. And this is uh, C prime, which is dollars per unit or item or product, all right? So it's $10 per item. This is uh, the derivative evaluated at 25, right? And one of the ways that we interpreted that is we could say that this is the additional cost of producing the 26th item, right? A one unit increase in your input, your derivative, which is the slope of your tangent line, gives you the increase in your output, right? And so this is the, uh, the additional cost of producing the 26th item, right? Notice I use the word additional because I'm saying from, this is like increasing production from item 25 to item 26, all right? So it's the additional cost of increasing the production one unit. That's how we did um, the instantaneous rate of change, our derivative, and that's what we have here. So this doesn't involve any integrals or anything like that. Just wanted to review that to keep for, so that you can keep that in mind. All right, let's go to one additional example here. It says the marginal cost of a company is given by C prime of Q equals Q squared minus 50Q plus 700, and their fixed costs are $5,000. Find the total cost uh, to produce 50 items. Again, total cost equals fixed cost plus variable cost. Our fixed cost is given to us, that's C evaluated at zero, which is that $5,000. And our variable cost is going to be the integral from zero to the number of items that we want to know the total cost for, which is 50, of C prime of QDQ. Now, notice here, we now have the function for C prime, right? So it's going to be Q squared minus 50Q plus 700 DQ. And so what we can do here is we can put this in our calculator. So I'm gonna have 5,000, let's clear everything out. Plus, we're gonna to go to math, and we're gonna to go to option nine, so it's here. I'm gonna do the integral from zero to 50. Now our calculator, I'm gonna use my x variable instead of q, so I'm gonna have x squared minus 50x plus 700, I'm gonna to scroll to the right and I'm gonna put my DX, press enter, and we get $19,166.67, right? If we didn't have that calculator, we can use our left and right hand sums to provide an estimate, which is the longer process. 
And we're going to learn how we can evaluate this integral without even using our calculators. All right, that's coming up next. But here, I have $19,166.67. Okay. It says, if each item sells for $900, find a profit or loss on the first 50 items, right? Well, remember, profit or loss has to do with profit. Remember, profit equals revenue minus cost. Well, my revenue, if I want to find my profit, I've got to find my revenue first. We already have our cost, which is up here, right? So our revenue is going to be price times quantity, and our price is $900. Our quantity is 50 items. So that's $45,000. And so I'm going to put my $45,000 in for my revenue. I'm going to subtract my $19,166.67, right? That's my cost. And so if I do that $45,000 minus $19,166.67, we're going to get a profit of $20,000. $5,833.33. So we have a profit because that is positive. That's a profit and not a loss. If it were negative, it would be a loss. We have a profit of $25,833.33. If I did that calculation correct. All right. And so how much would the cost, the total cost increase, the production were increased one unit to 51 items? Now, there are multiple ways that we can do this, right? We know, all right, I'm gonna go back to this option here, right? What we said when we found the value of C prime of Q, it was the additional cost of producing the 26th item, the, the next item, right? Here, this is asking me to find the total cost, how would the total cost, how much would the total cost increase if production were to increase one unit to 51 units? This can be found, all right, there's two methods. Method one, you can find C prime of 50, right? And so let's do that. C prime of 50 means to plug in 50 into your function, right? We have C prime, which is here. It's Q squared minus 50Q plus 700. So this is going to equal... 50 squared minus 50Q, which is 50 times 50, plus 700, right? This is going to be $700 per item, right? So the additional cost of producing the 51st item is $700, right? Or the cost function is increasing when Q equals 50 at $700 per item, right? Alternatively, we can calculate a variable cost, right? We could use the integral because the integral also gives the variable cost, right? The integral gives you, if I go from A to B, it also gives you the additional cost of increasing production from 50, sorry, from A to B units. And so what I could do is I could find the integral from 50 to 51 of C prime of Q dQ. Right? So I'm going to do that. The integral from 50 to 51. We know what our C prime of Q is. That's 50 uh, Q squared minus 50 Q plus 700 DQ. Right? And so I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to do that integral. Again, we go to math, we go to option nine, and I'm going to put from 50 to 51. And I'm going to have that x squared minus 50x plus 700. Scroll to the right, put my dx in there, press enter, and I get $725.33. And this is going to be dollars. So this gives me the additional cost of increasing production from 50 to 51 units, this gives me the additional cost of increasing production from 50 to 51 units, right? Which one of these is the better estimate, all right? Well, remember, this is based 
on the tangent line. Okay? It's based off of the tangent line, right? We're using the derivative. We plug it into the derivative, and that interpretation is based off of the tangent line. Remember, I try to grow, draw this graph, and we talked about linear approximation. If I go from A units to B, or A plus one unit, I'm going to be on the tangent line, and I'm not necessarily going to be on the actual function. There is some error when I use this method here. This method B is actually the better method. This is more exact. Because it uses the uh, rate of change and it actually uses the, it actually produces the difference in the cost, right? So if, if I think that my C prime is a valid function, then I'm going to use this method here to estimate the, if I increase my uh, quantity by one unit, how much my, my total cost is going to change. This is more accurate. Um, it's actually exact and it's more accurate because it's actually based off of using the derivative function to get to the regular function whose derivative that we have. And that's going to produce a, an accurate or an exact estimate. Whereas when we were doing this before, when we did this with the derivative, we were only getting an estimate based, based off of our tangent line approximation or linear approximation using the derivative. All right. So this concludes our video. This shows the value in having the integral and using the anti- uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus to help us answer questions. Uh, we can get actual more accurate results by using the derivative function and in integration versus just using the function and the derivative, which, which is what we want to be as accurate as possible. All right, this really concludes this video. We'll see you during the next video.